when you have a chance to see someone who is the best in the world at what she does, you should seize the opportunity to watch. When she's arguably the greatest of all time, then what do you think you should do? Simone Biles is next. Get the gold medal ready. The gleaming stainless steel of the Gateway Arch right next to the 2,000-mile-long Mississippi River. Welcome to St. Louis, Missouri, and the campus of St. Louis University. This is the Chaffetz Arena, and this is a big night for 23 women. We'll be thinking about tonight, but thinking a little bit about Rio de Janeiro in August. Simone Biles going for a fourth consecutive national title, and she has a big lead carryover from night one of the competition of 2.45 over Ali Raisman and maybe the new star of gymnastics, Lori Hernandez. You'll see them all tonight right here on NBC. Good evening, everybody. I'm Al Trowick along with two Olympic gold medalists, Nazi Lukin and Tim Daggett. Tim, what's at stake tonight? Well, obviously, it's a national championships. And Simone, as you mentioned, she can make it four in a row, which is unprecedented. She is the best gymnast, the most dominant female athlete, maybe female and male athlete in the world today. It's tremendous for that. But what else is going on is the selection procedure. And there's one person in particular you got to impress, and that is Marta Caroli. Every single one of these girls out here want to show her their stuff. Five women will be on the team in Brazil. Now tonight, we have nine women who have been to a world championships. It's a deep team. And Nasi, I turn to you for two women who've been to the Olympics that want to go back. Let's start with Allie Raisman. Well, Allie Raisman has looked great both here in uh, St. Louis and then, of course, at the competition just a few weeks ago in Hartford. And she has shown how reliable and consistent she is. And that's exactly what Marta Caroli is looking for and what Team USA needs. And she's a real leader and a complete pro. Now, let's go to Lori Hernandez. We just loved watching her. Oh, she's been so great, you know, and she has that personality, and she's, uh, she, it's just so exciting to watch her. It's her first time, her first year as a senior athlete in an Olympic year, and she has just handled the pressure so well. You won't believe how entertaining her floor exercise is, but our coverage begins tonight with Gabby Douglas. Night one, she didn't look like an Olympic gold medalist, that's for sure. How would you describe the way you think she looked? Well, you know, I think what some people don't realize is how hard it is what she's doing. She is the reigning Olympic all-around champion. The pressure, the expectation is extremely high, and she is here for a job. She's here to deliver something that hasn't been done in so long. And, you know, a lot of people now were saying she didn't look as sharp, she didn't look so good. Some people were starting to question things. I talked to Marta right before the competition began. I said, if you only had night one of the PNG championships, to pick your team, would Gabby Douglas be on it? And she said, absolutely, without a beat. The last Olympic all-around gold medalist to return to the Olympics, Nadia Komenich. So let's see, there's a pride element here too, guys, right? Oh, without a doubt, you know? And she is a, a, a competitor. She is fierce, as she likes to say. And she will start off on the uneven bars. And this is a place where Gabby is really helpful to Team USA. She's tremendous on the uneven bars. There's a real strategy to picking a five-woman team for the four events. And we'll go over all of that as we move along here in St. Louis tonight. Well, you know, that lady right there, Marta Caroli, she told me before the meet began that she was extremely pleased with the consistency of all of the athletes. She said that they'll be a little bit better in a couple of weeks in San Jose, and they'll basically try to maintain that through Rio. She told Andrea after night one, she just needs to slow things down. But she's got to connect all of this stuff, and she does very well. Ooh, a little crooked. That was, she was crooked on that arm. Haven't seen her miss that in competition since she came back. But she's gonna lose the element, I would imagine. Double layout. Well, she definitely won't be happy with that. 
Night one, she missed a connection, and tonight was a little bit worse. I think, you know, I can imagine that they might give her the element, but you can see right from the beginning, as she does this turn, she doesn't square her body completely, doesn't get over that right arm enough, so she's off balance, coming through the bottom, doesn't have enough oomph to get up there. Well, I'm not sure, Tim. That, that yeah. looks a little questionable. She didn't quite make it all the way up to the top, so it'll be interesting to see what the judges do here. You see, right from the beginning, she doesn't quite get her hand all the way on the bar. And you're right, Nastia. She does not get up to that handstand. That's going to be a big And adding those, adding that little extra skill just makes you even more tired. A lot of emotion one way or the other. But you know, she. this is how she's been since she came back. She looked like this at Nationals last year. She looked like this in Glasgow at the World Championships where she had a super comeback, finishing runner-up to Simone Biles in the all-around. Maggie Nichols not coming back from one knee injury, but two. She's got tonight and two more days in San Jose to get Marta's eye. Yeah, and I actually got the chance to talk to Maggie last week before she left for the competition. And she told me coming back from an injury always brings a fire inside of me, making me want to achieve my dreams even more than before. And she's only doing competing two events tonight. The balance beam and the uneven bars. But unlike night one, she warmed up the other two events as well. Also, night one of the competition, she was very shaky on a few of her skills on the beam, and so far, much more confident, much more relaxed. Just a little wobble there. And Marta said, we don't have enough information on Maggie yet. She said, really, where she's going to help the team is on floor and vault. Floor, she was a world medalist. And vault, she does that coveted Aminar vault. She said she needs to get back to that level to be in contention. The dismount here. Definitely better, though. Yeah, definitely better than night one, but still needs a little bit more time to get a little more consistent. Gabby Douglas wanted to be better than night one. She wasn't so far. 14.5 after getting a 15.1 on the uneven bars night one. You are absolutely going to love what's coming your way right now. Let's go to Andrea Joyce. Al, we all know that the parents of these athletes go through their own kind of mental gymnastics at these competitions. I spoke to Allie Raceman's mom, Lynn, the other day, and she told me she cannot believe that they are going through this again. You may remember that Lynn and Rick kind of became mini celebrities in London for their animated reactions to Allie's routines. The video went viral, and Al, I got some interesting news for you. Brace yourself. Lynn go. says she's more nervous than ever. Come on, Allie. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Catch it. Nice. Come on. Come on. Catch. Let's go. Let's go. Catch it. Just the hawk. Just the hawk. Stick it, please. Stick, Stick it. it. Yeah! I could just keep watching that and watching that, and that's what it's like to be a parent. Right now, she's somewhere other than sitting next to her husband. She can't bear to watch. And look who's coming up, Allie Race. She knows how to do this. And she was phenomenal night one. She said her best outing since she's come back. Spectacular here on floor. Olympic, all Olympic champion on this event. Watch this pass. It never ends.
about a month's time, that at the Olympic Games, absolutely medal worthy. Wow. It's the crowd involved and a relieved smile. Mom might be a little too nervous to watch. saves the really good stuff for the Olympics. <laughs> or maybe an event that, you know, she's not the reigning Olympic champion on. <laughs> I can tell you that Maggie Nichols got a 14.35 on the balance beam. After night one, the competition, Ali said, I was like, Samoa only beat me by a point and a half. That's pretty good. <laughs> now we're going to try and fill out the team the opinion of Nastia and Tim, and one of the spots that comes up is on the uneven bars, where we happen to find Madison Koshin. And really, she has one major competitor in this competition. Her name is Ashton Locklear. Madison is the reigning world champion. She tied at the world championships with three other gymnasts, but she's phenomenal. She has underperformed a little bit. And Ashton, in the last, in the first night of competition here and at the Secret Classic, finished a little bit ahead of her. But Maddie didn't connect her first element and could have been a little bit sharper. Comes off right at the top. This in bar skill. Right to here, very nicely done. Beautiful. Look at the flight. It is so airy. Excellent handstand right there. Another great position. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. That is what she's looking for. That was fabulous. That was just about as good as she has ever done in competition. Wow. That was great. She's been just a little bit not as phenomenal as she usually is. But what I love is how everything looks so elegant and so easy. Watch as she just beautiful pirouette right there and then underneath and flies up to the high bar. She's not done. And, and watch, you want to see her land right on top of the bar in a handstand so she doesn't get any deduction. Perfect. And finishes with a full twisting double back. And boom. Nastia, how long have you known her? <laughs> Uh, basically her whole life, <laughs> since she was three years old. Amazing. Same gym. She, that, was, that was really, really great. <laughs> I'll tell you what was great, Allie Raisman's score. She beat night one by a tenth, 15.7. Same number for Madison Koshin, so she makes her first statement of the night, and it's a whopper, 15.7 for her too. Really big number there. Now Lori Hernandez is going to like her, but one second in. She's going to do a double twisting Yurchenko. She'll leave the horse to a full flip. Two twists. Actually, it was good, but she can do a little bit better. She kind of crunched onto the table. You can see her elbows will bend a little bit. And she will close her shoulder angle. When you hit the table, you want your arms to be completely over your head, as extended as possible. She's a little bit low here. And because of that, doesn't get the same bounce off the table, the same height in the air. I just want to go back to Madison Koshin. The scores sometimes are difficult to understand ever since they went to the new system. So we've come up with this system. Green, you're good to go. You've kept the deductions to a minimum. You start getting into trouble when you're 1.4 to 1.9, and above that, it's a potential meat stopper. Lori Hernandez 
a little bit less than she did on night one, 14.8 to 15.05. We get our first look at the one and only Simone Biles looking to make it four straight. PG Gymnastics Championships presented by Pantene are brought to you by Olay, Ageless, by AT&T, Mobilizing Your World, and by PG, proud sponsor of Moms. And we return to the uneven bars, and I guess it's safe to say for Alyssa Bauman, Tim and Nastia, this is not nearly as important what's coming up later. Yes, actually, she is known as a beam worker. And that's where she would contribute to Team USA. Don't believe that she would make the uneven bar team final for the USA, but she wants to actually improve and show that she can deal with the pressure because night one, she had a really rough go at 12.75. Right here is where she fell night one, not today. Beautiful. Well, certainly much better tonight than we saw just a couple of days ago. Melissa said she remembers in 2008 she went to watch the Olympic trials and she dreamed that someday she would have the chance to be here competing. Well, Simone Biles is considered by the people next to me the greatest of all time. Now, on the men's side, Kohei Uchimura of Japan. And there are some segments of the floor exercise that you're about to see that Simone goes as high as Uchimura does and has the complexity that Uchimura does, which is remarkable. Yeah, you could, you just run out of adjectives when you're talking about Simone Biles. But when you're talking about her on floor, it's it's really, it's kind of ridiculous because it's just people are, are not capable. No one ever before has been capable of doing a, a floor routine with such jam-packed difficulty. And it's not just the first pass, which is astounding. It's not just the second pass, where she does her own skill, the bios, the third pass. When people are exhausted, she's dancing. She does a double twisting, double somersault. It's just, it's unbelievable. There's a woman by the name of Joan Moore who was involved in four consecutive national championships in the early 70s. But two of those she shared. So that means that Simone Biles would be the first one to ever win four straight outright. So just take a look on all of the tumbling passes, how high she goes. She explodes off the floor.
there is your state of the art. You know, to be honest, I'm a little bit at loss for words because all you can say is, wow, that really was just incredible. How would you like to have to go up after her? Good job. That was so good. You did this thing in your team? Yes, I, I know. Too. I noticed it the other day, too. Good job. Thanks. Awesome. That was so good. Yeah, yeah. That's so fun. Okay. So she's done these skills, like this opening pass right here, a double layout with a full twist. But look at the height that she gets. Just keeps floating higher and higher. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's incredible. And she then could probably do three twists on that. She, she really could. And then here's her second pass where Tim mentioned the Biles. So it's a double layout. One flip, two flips. And right before she lands, she does a half turn into a split jump. Perfect. And remember, she's been dancing and she's been tumbling like crazy. And once again, this you see from the top gymnasts, the very top gymnasts in the world, as their opening pass and they don't soar anywhere near that. At the end of the routine, it is just more of the same. And you know, she does this stuff so easy. She has, nobody's pushing her. She could do more without a doubt, and that's frightening. Uh, that was really really I know. Score upcoming. coming. She just does a big major mistakes and pull. We'll take a break here as we continue with the 2016 P&G Gymnastics Championships. It could be another big Simone Biles night. Simone Biles floor exercise score, a 16.05. Somehow the judges found a way to get eight and a half points of deductions because well, I guess that's what judges do. Al Trowick along with Nasia Lukin and Tim Daggett so far. Simone Biles has increased her lead over, over Ali Raisman by 2.8 and Lori Hernandez 3.7. And it is time now for the latest episode of Build Your Olympic Team. Nasia, start us off. Well, Team USA isn't going to Rio without their star, Simone Biles. So that is obviously she is going to fit in on three events. She could potentially do the uneven bars. The next athlete is Allie Raceman, and you'll see why she does just as many events as Simone Bile. Remember, three up, three count in the team finals. And then you have your reigning all-around Olympic champion, Gabby Douglas. As of right now, you definitely can't leave her off the team, and she fits in very nicely on the uneven bars where she can help Team USA tremendously. We only got one name on uneven bars, and this is where it gets a little tricky because there are two athletes, Ashton Locklear and Madison Koshin, who can contend for that spot. They're both great there. Who else? Oh golly, there's there's a lot of a lot of people that are, are in the hunt. Someone like Michaela Skinner is possible. Lori Hernandez, definitely. Maggie Nichols. And then of course you have Alyssa Bauman and Reagan Smith who are great on the balance beam. So you see there's a lot of girls in a few spots to fill, so it's going to be a battle all the way through the end. Meanwhile, as far as tonight's event goes, as you look at the legendary Bella Caroli with Marta, hopefully you saw the ranch about where they live and where they teach the sport of gymnastics, but there's got to be a feeling here tonight that if you finish second place, you're a champion. No, absolutely. I mean, Allie Raceman jokes about that all the time. She says every competition they go to internationally, nationally, at the camps, Whoever gets second, she says, that's the winner. Because it's really almost unfair how much better she is than everybody else. So for Simone Biles, it's about a national championship. For everybody else, it's all about Marta Caroli. We can't say that enough. Back to the second rotation after this on NBC. very important for Michaela Skinner. This is where she fits into that team puzzle, perhaps. She'll do two vaults just to convince everybody that if she gets the Olympic chance, she means business. I was talking to Marta before the meet began, and I said to her, she needs to switch her vaults around. Her second vault is better than her first. It's actually worth a little bit more, and Marta goes, you are exactly right. I told her the same thing. You have good eyes, Timmy. 
So that made me feel really good. Here we go. And she did. Very nicely done. It's, it's a higher start value. She completes it much earlier. That's the way your fella is better. Yeah, I didn't really go all out on that. So look at this, so complicated. Half turn onto the board, then half turn again. What they criticize Michaela for at times is they say she doesn't get good support on both hands. Both hands were definitely down on the table that time. Michaela's actually gonna do a second vault and only her and Simone are gonna be doing two vaults here. Because if they were to make the Olympic team and wanna secure a spot in the in the vault finals at the Olympic Games, you have to to do two different vaults. And they have to be what we call, what gymnastics calls two different families. Which means that she did that half turn onto the board and then she did a half turn onto the table. This time she'll do the half turn onto the board and dive straight back into the table. And that was a better score than she got night one, so good decision for her. But that one was pretty darn good. That was way better than she did night one. Both of those balls were. She started great already on floor exercise, had a 14.9, which is a couple tenths higher than she did in day one as well. So job done for Michaela Skinner. And now, Reagan Smith. We got some feedback on Andrea's report yesterday about the little beads. You know, the gymnastics police are out 24 7. The beads went to Andrea from Kim Zemeskel. She actually had a great bar routine. Oh dear. And that is exactly what she cannot do. She doesn't really make the team because of bars. For coach Chris Burdett. Right there now. Like I said, she doesn't make the team because of bars. It's beam and she struggled on that night one. Marta told me we need to see her show the consistency in these bigger meets. She said she was very surprised to see those nerves from Reagan after she's competed so well internationally this year for the USA. Reagan will turn 16 on August 8th, the day after the women perform. Coach Kim Zemeskel Burdett, a world champion, one of the greatest that ever has been. So this bar is four feet nine, and she doesn't even have to bend over at all. We asked her how tall she was. She said, I think five six. And Kim said, I don't think so. And she goes, Oh, maybe it's four six. <laughs> and here's the skill that she so she did a stalder, and then she goes immediately into her release move. And you see she catches the bar extremely close and just wasn't able to hold on. did not win vaulting at the last World Championships. And one of the major reasons why was because she didn't have an upgraded second vault. But she does now. And in my opinion, that makes her eligible to possibly win five. Oh. It just gets better every single time. Oh, God. Imagine this, I mean, someone came from a broken home it was obvious that her mother could not raise her. Who knows what would have happened if she wasn't lucky enough to have a grandfather who was married to a woman 
who said just about the right thing at the right time all the way to this moment. Pretty neat. Pretty lucky. A lot to be thankful for. We keep saying it, you know, she just flies so high. Look at the rebound she gets off this table. Boom! And it's going up, going up, and she completely opens her body, throws her arms out to the side. 16. So oh, one, one tenth. tenth. Come on, ladies, give it up. You're going to take one tenth, you can give it a ten. Well, she did have a little bitty hop on that <laughs> landing that time. So here is that same ball we saw from Michaela. Very good. Not quite as good as night one. But those two vaults, as I say, copy and paste them, do them, do them in Rio in the beginning of August, and that's another gold medal in her war chest. And look at, you see, the again, at the same vault as Michaela. Look at her spot the landing. A little bit of a pike down on the landing. Not too bad, of course. It's a very difficult vault. So she'll do the half turn on, and then another quick half turn. Sometimes she doesn't get her arms down quite soon enough. She got her arms down better in day one, so she got a little bit more flight, but still going to be a very big number. Is it an issue that she crosses her feet when she's in the air? It is, it is. It's, you know, it can be a tenth of a point. But there you see it. So a 16.2 and a 16.0, and Reagan Smith a 13.55, and you see from the red arrow, dangerous score to try and absorb. So now it's Alyssa Bauman. She needs a big night. And this is exactly the event that she really needs a big night. Where she fits in on the team is on this event, the balance beam. Marta said that she must work on building her confidence. She said that doesn't come from nowhere is what she told me, but that was confident. She called her a very elegant gymnast, but needs to show in competition what she does in training. right there. It's called an anodi into that leap. Done by a really famous Hungarian gymnast, Henrietta Anodi. Just the dismount left. Okay, well, you know, a little bit of a bobble on that switch ring. Step on the dismount, but overall solid. It seemed like she was a little bit more confident tonight. Well, that's certainly going to help her. Certainly better than she did in night one. But the bobbles that Nastia mentioned and the dismount is where they could hit her a little bit. Chest very low on the lane. 16-year-old Lori Hernandez. This is the right year to be turning 16. A little bit off on that. Over on the hands, and you're always looking. Now, these are called Tekachevs, and she does three of them. A couple she does from a straddle. Very nice. Because she mixes it up, she's able to capitalize on that basically similar skill. just been rock solid here. <laughs> Maggie Haney. So here you see she goes from the low bar all the way up to the high bar, swings as high as she can and goes immediately into a Tkachev. 
beautiful. And then, as Tim was saying, she has two more of these skills in a pike's position. And then the third one she does in a straddle position. Beautiful. You know, this was very good. This was very good, but I thought she was a little bit better night one. Fourteen point seven, not as good as night one for Alyssa Bauman. Allie Raceman on the vault. Big vault here. And one of the main reasons, well, she's got three main reasons why she's gonna be on the team in Rio. And this is one of them right here. The same vault we saw from Simone Biles. Very nicely done. It's so hard to do that. Only a handful of gymnasts around the world are capable. That was good. She's been working so hard to make that better because she knows Team USA really needs that ball. She just said, I think, that's good. Thank you. High breast and her coach was saying, well, very good. You're watching the 2016 P&G Gymnastics Championships. We'll have a national champion when the night is done. Classic shots as at these championships. The beam, the flag, and here's Gabby Douglas, the London Olympics all around gold medalist. A lot of people were commenting that she just didn't look like herself. Very, very serious. Night one. This is a big skill right here. Back with a full. This is much more aggressive. Marta told me that Gabby needs higher expectations of herself in training. She said, we know she can compete. I like this Gabby. It it almost looks like she's mad. Look at the way she yeah. throws her hands. Very definite, very aggressive, way better than night one. The dismount. And that's the Olympic champion Gabby Douglas we are used to seeing. Take that everyone. The doubters on Twitter. This right here. Hugely difficult. Back with a full somersaulting and twisting on the balance beam. Craziness spots that beam rock solid. So good. And of course, she ended with a fantastic dismount. Two back handsprings into an immediate double pike. You want to look for her chest. Little bit low, but a stuck landing. All you doubters, she says, when people say I can't do something, I love it. I'm more confident, more courageous, Thank you guys more too. warrior minded. Take that. Lori Hernandez, 15.15, not as good as night one by a little bit. And Ali Raceman, a 15.5, better than night one by a little bit. Hope you saw the men's Olympic trials last night. It was crazy good. The emotions will have some of the images. But if you haven't seen the interview between John Orozco and Andrea Joyce, you must stay with us. It's about as human as it gets. Halfway point of tonight's 
national championship night perhaps for Simone Biles. She's got a 3.5 lead and it's growing. Meanwhile, Gabby Douglas got a very solid 15.05 on the balance beam. But well, last night, the men's Olympic trials was really, really good. What did you think, Nastia? You know, I think it was the most emotional night of competition I have ever witnessed. And I'm not sure if there was anything that topped the emotion of John Orozco, who now gets to go to a second Olympic Games and undo the mistakes that he had in London four years ago. It was absolutely intense. The most difficult selection, I think, USA men's gymnastics had to come to. There were so many tremendous moments, but there was a guy like Danelle Leva who fell short, as well as Danelle Wittenberg. Down came the balloons. Crowd was chanting USA. Even the men who helped select the team, Kevin Majika, joined all of us in tears watching it all unfold because they knew that John Orozco in the last year and a half had a severe Achilles injury, plus he lost his mom. Shortly after all of this, he spoke to our Andrea Joyce, and what came out was just from the heart. Well, John Orozco has had more than his share of heartbreak over the last year and a half, but these tears of joy, can you possibly take us inside your head and tell us what's going through it right now? I, um, <clears throat> I'm just at a loss for words, really. I I just came to this competition and I really thought I had to stay on my toes and really show them that I can do this. And I I can't I just can't believe it. I can't put it into words. I'm just after the past year and a half I've had and all the people that doubted me, I finally found the strength within myself to go out there and do it. And I know the job's not over, but I know that I can go out there now and really give it all I got and. I'm just, I'm really proud of everyone that's helped me got, get to this point, especially my mom. How much was your mom in your heart and in your mind tonight? My mom was there the whole time, and I know she's looking down on me, and she's so proud. And uh, if you can hear me, Mom, I love you. Doctors told you last June that there was no way you would be able to compete for at least a year after that Achilles injury. What was it? emotionally and physically that powered you through? Just, I found it within myself and the people who created that within myself and my family and my friends and they, just their strength resonates with me so much and I am so thankful. And I, the job's not over and I know, and I'm proud to be representing USA and I'm, I'm gonna give it all I got. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll see you in Rio. How does that sound? <laughs> it's amazing. And that is what the Olympics mean to John Orozco. So there is the men's team, Chris Brooks, Jake Dalton, Sam McCulloch, Alex Nador, and John Orozco. Earlier today, it was announced that the replacement athletes will be Danell Leva, Akash Modi, and Danell Wittenberg. We'll see what happens. We'll take a break. The women are hitting the third rotation. Simone Biles in front. Ali Raisman not far behind. You're looking at potential future teammates in Rio. By the way, off those images of last night's men's Olympic trials, the women are going to announce their team the exact same way. Sunday, two weeks from now, in San Jose, California. Ashton Locklear's name? may be part of it. The way Tim sees it, it's a little bit of a battle between her and Madison Koshin. Koshin has just gone and been very impressive a short while ago. She's got to know she has to respond to that, right? Absolutely. Madison scored a 15.7. But if you take a look at day one here and the secret classic, Ashton still has an advantage. She needs a 15.4 to come out ahead. Look at the... She just flies. Love this right here. She usually catches it nice and far, so it looks even more lofty. Uh, oh, dismount. That was very, very good. You know, she specifically told me, though, that she is keying in on that dismount. She had a couple of meets earlier in the year, one in Italy, and she said, I didn't stick those dismounts, and I really gotta focus on that. 
So beautiful transition. Scoots her legs inside of her hands. That's very, very difficult. And she just is so light. Catches it far away. Beautiful look in the air. Great height. And as Tim said, she's been working very hard on this dismount. You can't afford any extra tenths of deduction, especially in the Olympic Games. So she was going for that stick. You see her eyeing the ground. And just a slight, slight, slight move of the foot. Just barely, yeah. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Unfortunately, though, if you think we're picky, the judges are just as picky. And you know who's worse? Marta Caroli. I think she's going to be better than that 15 4 she needed to stay ahead of Madison in this, these trial processes. It's exactly the same number. Wow. It really on, is a battle. Yep. Every single time they go up a meet Confidence. and even bars, they are Get battling on, every time. So Koshin gets a 15.7, Locklear gets a 15.7. And if they do what they did with the men, who went by the numbers, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now on the even bars for Palm Beach, Emily Peskin. Thank you, Lori Hernandez. Don't forget, her floor exercise is awesome, and it's in the next rotation. How do you think she is here? Well, she's actually very good on this event, but this, the balance beam is always a huge test to see if you can perform under pressure. And that is exactly what Marta Caroli is looking for. for second in the all-around after night one with Allie Raisman and even Simone said it's, it's good for Lori to know that she's that good and it's great to see her on the top. Of course, you know, not beating her. <laughs> Setting up for the dismount right here. I think that was her best performance today. She, she was just absolutely phenomenal in day one everywhere. It was a little bit less great on vaults and on bars today, but look at this right here. Three skills in a row. And look at the knees and the toes. Look at those toes. They are rock solid pointed. Beautiful layout step out. She'll do another one right in a row. Look at she's staring at that beam, slamming the foot down and finishing perfectly. One of my favorite skills. And here's the dismount. So just like Gabby Douglas, she does two back handsprings into a double pike. And again, you want to look for where her chest is on the landing. Oh, definitely low. She'll get some deduction for that. That'll probably be three tenths of a point, even if you stick it in your chest is low. Those dang judges. We're going to take we go to the uneven bars and Simone Biles. And on your projected Olympic team, guys, you do not have Simone Biles written down on the uneven bars. Why not? Well, because it, if she has a weakness, it's the uneven bars. And by weakness, I mean not as, as outrageously fantastic as she is on the other three events. But you know what? Oh, wow. That, that was a big mistake. Yes. I was just about to say. 
that she's so typically consistent and reliable on this event, even though she doesn't score quite as high as Ashton Lockley or Madison Koshin. Release combination here. Right into to the low. And you know, that was, that was a small break. Dismount right here. Stop landing. Well, even with that tiny mistake, she is still going to increase her lead. Mary Hernandez gets a 15.3 for her balance beam. And you know, I tell you, I'm, in my opinion, she has been so flawless in everything that she does. It's almost, it, it could be a relief that she showed just a little bit of humanity here. And, <laughs> you know, because this is very nice. This is called a Weiler Kip. Jordan Weber, one of the first to do that for the Americans. She's supposed to fly right up to the handstand, but she's a little short. <clears throat> see the legs come apart, but she, this is what you want to see. You want to see an athlete that is challenged and figures out a way to get it done, and she just did that. And you see the same skill again. So she doesn't quite get her shoulders over the bar enough, but again, manages a way to get over the bar and continue the routine. And here's that dismount. Full twisting, double back, just as we saw so many other of the other gymnasts do. Boom, stuck it cold. We will get her score when we come back in this third rotation. The two Olympians trying to return, Gabby Douglas and Ali Raisman. It's the PNG Gymnastics Championships. Take by Simone Biles on a 14.75. Not as good as night one, but it's still green. Stop the presses. She's human. Right, we resume now with uh, Gabby Douglas coming off a very strong performance on the beam. And I thought that day one, Gabby's best exercise was floor exercise. And you saw a smile there. People have been saying she hasn't smiled at all. That beam routine probably had something to do with it. This pass right here, though, it's new for her. 
She does a full twisting double back, and she's supposed to go right into this backflip. And look at that. Both heels are on the white line. That should be three-tenths of a point. I didn't see. The flag just went up in the corner. Okay, it did go up. But she, she darn near didn't make it around to her feet. Allie Raisman on the bars. She's in second place all by herself now. And this event for Allie is definitely her weakest. She says she's just trying to get through this routine. Her coach, Mihai Breshkin, says the goal for Allie on bars is to make the routine as short as possible. <laughs> And it's a well-constructed routine for her. Remember, though, her three events, vaulting, balance beam, and floor, are just spectacular. She wouldn't be used in the team final. But that's a solid exercise for Allie Raisman right there. Now, Reagan Smith on the balance beam. I don't know how you guys do it, but she should not be thinking about what happened in night one. It's very difficult. Back with a pull, and you see the step, the step, the balance check with her leg. She just seemed a little bit off throughout the entire competition. Of course, having them fall on the uneven bars. This is the apparatus that you guys have her as one of those question marks. Well, yeah, this is, this is where she can make her case. At a competition earlier this year, the Pacific Rim competition, she actually beat Allie Raisman and won the beam title. So she's very good on this event. Really tumbles. It's like a lot of girls when they do this pass, they're jumping, but she rebounds. Watch this. Back handspring to a layout. Excellent. Keeps her body super extended in the air. And here is that skill she struggled on night one. Much better. on the beam, as I said, right into a Patterson. Really great. That's the kind of routine we are accustomed to seeing from Reagan Smith. Struggled night one on this skill. Took a whole bunch of little steps and a big balance check with a separating of her legs. And look at that foot, that front foot. Unbelievable. But she saves it, and here's that dismount. It is so incredibly hard. Named after 2004 Olympic champion Carly Patterson. Watch this, she does a half turn into a double front blind landing. Basically sticks, just a slight move back with her okay. foot. Okay, we're happy with that. Good job. There's one routine job. she wanted the most. Okay. That was Which probably it, and she All gets right. it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Gabby Douglas, doing 14, 14 four five. Yeah. And a strange trip around the floor for her. Allie Raceman gets a 14.15. We'll find out in a moment if that costs her second place or not. The women head to the fourth and final rotation. The last statement to be made before the Olympic trials in two weeks.
back here in St. Louis, Simone Biles still has a huge lead. It's insurmountable over Ali Raisman, 4.1, Lori Hernandez, 4.2. That's a pretty good battle. Gabby Douglas, way back, seven points back of Simone Biles. She's made a habit of wins like this. After winning this title in 2013 by only two tenths, she dominated in 14, dominated in 15, and is doing it again, heading toward the Olympics in 40 days. Still to come in the fourth rotation, Lori Hernandez doing her thing in floor exercise, which is fun to watch. At the 2008 Beijing Olympics, Sean Johnson was one of America's best. In the all-around, she won the silver medal to a very annoying woman who took the gold. And then she was able to come back on the balance beam and clinch a gold medal for herself. After that, Dancing with the Stars, and right now, a conversation with Andrea Jones. And Al, that summer, Sean also won the national championship and the trials. So much like Simone Biles, you were really a lock for that Olympic team. People just assume that that makes it so much easier, was it? Not at all. I mean, the nerves are still there. It's still the most nerve-wracking competition besides the Olympics. Nothing is a lock. Anything can happen in this sport. So for me, I didn't feel like that at all. So you are watching Simone Biles for the very first time live. What do you think? Uh, she's amazing, but I think my favorite part was on her floor routine. She actually like made eye contact with me and winked at me. Which... Did you imagine ever doing that in the middle of a routine? No, she's just, she's amazing. It's great to watch her. In 2007, you competed at the Pan Am Games in Rio in the very same arena they're going to use for the Olympics. What can you tell us about that? It's massive. The fans are so supportive and just loud. Um, it's a great arena. It was so much fun. I remember it being truly the loudest arena I'd ever competed in. So it's going to be a blast there, and you have been having a blast lately. You got married. You wrote a book. I mean, how great is life for you these days? Uh, pretty great. Uh, pretty busy, but I can't wait to go to Rio and kind of support the girls and watch them and uh, cheer them on. All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you over there. Thank you. All right, Al. Any great memories there, right, Nastia? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Here she is. Lori Hernandez on the floor. Enjoy. And boy, I tell you, she has had just a phenomenal PNG championships. And if you're going to ask me, stock up, stock down, stock way up for Lori Hernandez. This is where she really shines.
Yeah, but I tell you, she really needs to come out of her shell, I would say. <laughs> that, is, that is just fantastic. She puts as much, if not more, energy into the dance. It shows, she says, she gets to play a bunch of different characters. And she was so giddy when she's telling us that. And she says, I'm like an actress. Beautiful. Well, she well, pulled it off. Done. I like those dresses better pump better. Absolutely. So this is a very difficult tumbling pass. This Arabian double front half turn into a double front. And she goes right into a leap very well. Shows a lot of control. A lot of gymnasts, when they do that, kind of look a little bit off. And when we talked to her earlier this week, you know, we were asking about the pressure, the expectation. She was like, you know, I think I'm handling it pretty well. I like the attention a little bit. And she thought about it, and she's like, actually, I love it. <laughs> it was so great. When we were talking to her, her coach right there, Maggie Hanny, for the first part of our interview, she was videotaping us. You know, I mean, this is, this is all basically new. She said, we never talked about the Olympics until about seven months ago, ever. Andrea told me that when she and her coach came here for the junior championship when she was in this building, they forgot to bring a second Leo. Here's Gabby Douglas. Big, a big hop back on that landing. But that was a good fall for her. I know she's been training in Aminar, trying to possibly upgrade that for Rio. Tim, after seeing Gabby for two nights here, stock up or stock down? Well, I would say stock up. You know, she's had some places where, you know, a little bit questionable, but overall, now on you know, she had a tremendous fight a couple of times and, and didn't make a mistake. Oh my gosh, that was the best ever in your life. Yeah, it was life. Nice to your thoughts. I mean, I think you see the green for her score. Her maximum scores is pretty high, and I mean, I think there was a little bit. The deductions were a little bit high, but some of her landings weren't exactly stuck and. No, she could clean it up a little bit, but I mean, overall, it was just so impressive. I don't think it's rewarded well enough for artistry, though. You know, I mean, I agree there, with there you. are components in there that are required for artistry, and she goes above and well beyond. Simone Biles on the beat. Just one routine away from clinching her fourth straight national title. newest skill and probably trickiest is right here. Front flip with a half. A little bit off. Nothing major at all. Another test right here. Three in a row. told me in the past that she's so frustrated with herself because she never is as perfect as she wants to be on balance beam. She was darn near perfect night one, but just slight balance checks, but. Her dismount, it's huge. Humbles into a full twisting double. <laughs> Step forward. Anybody else in the whole wide world would be overjoyed. <laughs> but that is not up to Simone Biles' standards. <laughs> My legs are just so dead. That's like, okay. Her legs are dead. Not. And she jumps higher than everybody else. But look at this right here. That was like the worst routine of all week. <laughs> One of the worst routines all week. So watch this front flip, half turn. She is laser beam focused with her eyes on that balance beam. Here's where she had that little wobble. So it's a back handspring into a back layout and another back layout, extremely difficult. You know, didn't really seem hard to tell from this angle. Didn't really seem too off balance. Let's take another look. So one layout, and the second layout, you know, didn't seem, didn't seem too bad. Just her shoulders were a little bit off. And the dismount. 
so hard. Bull twisting double somersault, and she's mad at herself. She said, my legs feel so dead. Nobody does that as easily as that when her legs are so dead, folks. Her night is done. Gabby Douglas gets a 14.9 for her vault. It's a green score with 9 tenths of deductions. This is the fourth and final first rotation here in St. Louis. The road to Rio continues with the U.S. Olympic trials over the next two weeks on NBC and NBCSN. Going on now through July 3rd is swimming from Omaha. Michael Phelps signature event, the 200 meter fly will be on Tuesday. Track and field begins on Friday and runs through July 10th. And the women's gymnastics trials will be in San Jose on July 8th and 10th, where we will find out which five women will represent Team USA in Rio. Simone Biles of 15.1. What do you think the last time was that she got a yellow score? <laughs> a long time ago. But hold your horses out because she's gonna win tonight. And this performance, she would crush everybody in the world in Rio. She's she's that much better than everybody. Okay, Maggie Nichols. Coming back from injury, only doing two events here. So this event is important for her, but what's even more important for her is in two weeks to show up in San Jose at the Olympic Trials. Oh, oh. my goodness. Another little bit of, of a wobble. A little bit flustered there. So as I was saying, it's important for her to show up in San Jose and be able to do vault and floor mm -hmm. as well. Passed on that handstand. A very strong finish, but not remotely what Maggie is looking for. So you see she does a pack salto and Im immediately tries to go, but completely just misses her toes on the bar, then tries to recover with a kip, cast to a handstand, falls short. Just one thing after another when they're trying to connect so many skills. She's got a couple of little arthroscopic scars on one knee and she's got a couple of arthroscopic scars on the other. Actually, that left knee, she dislocated her patella tendon, her kneecap, and it was major surgery to fix that. And then just a couple of months ago, three months ago, I guess, she injured her other knee doing that vault that Marta Caroli told me tonight that she needs to be at the same level she was before the injury to be in contention on floor and vaulting. She had an amazing beam routine in night one, but after the competition she said, you know, it's never enough until you're on that Olympic team and you have a medal around your neck. She does this like Allie usually does. She'll retake second place. like somebody who controls it all and doesn't feel intimidated. These are the kind of people that you want on your team. But she told me last year at the World, she was a little disappointed with Ali. It wasn't the gymnast she was accustomed to seeing. But she said, night one here, absolutely the Ali that she was in 2012, Totally trust her, she said. Just 
the dismount. Extremely difficult. It's that Patterson dismount. We saw it from Reagan Smith. Out of a round off this time. And she has to be happy with her competition here in St. Louis. Here's that dismount, the Patterson. So she, she'll do a round off, jump up, do a half turn in a double front, blind landing. She stuck that cold night one. So not as good night two, but still showed complete control. Just the slight deduction on that hop. In my opinion, she has shown total readiness here in St. Louis. Both days, just really, really a great job. And what Marta Caroli likes so much is she talks about it. Always consistency, consistency. And Allie is the model of consistency. Allie just told Lori, I think we should tie again. <laughs> Yeah, we can all just, thank you. Nichols, not going like that at all, 13.6. Yeah, you know, coming back, it's it's never easy. And there's a point really where you have to trust your knee too, right? Now, without question, but I don't think that that was the case right there. Because really, it's only the dismount, but you know, you get, these gymnasts are typically Mama accustomed to doing now, all four events. And when you have a big break back. off, it's it can be challenging. You get a little bit cold. Let's go. But that that was a disappointing turn of events for this young lady right here. But day two is always like While we yeah, wait for yeah. Allie's score, and that's good, we're going to enjoy this, I think, because not only can Lori yeah. maybe yeah. contribute to the Rio team, but she's certainly good for morale. Watch this. <laughs> people say Simone is hyper. Nice, Allie. But other people say Lori is way more hyper. You're definitely so much that together. <laughs> And Allie Raisman is going to retake in second place. Michaela Skinner. She actually has done a very nice job. Did a great job on floor and then another great job on vaulting tonight. You see very few gymnasts nowadays that do a major mount onto the balance beam. It was very popular in years past. You know, it's so... Oh, boy. has a lot of ability on balance beam. Some of the hardest moves being done in the world, but really, the way she makes her case best is on floor and ball. Definitely not on the uneven bars. She wants to show consistently consistency, as I said. Relatively new for her. Same dismount we saw from Simone Biles. Full twisting double, really hard. And just not there tonight. On beam. You know, they definitely wouldn't use her for the team finals on the balance beam, but still, you never want to finish a competition with three falls on the balance beam. Now, you mentioned that 
they would maybe counter count on her for two other routines, not on the balance beam. But does a routine like that hurt the whole whole thing? Absolutely. You know, I mean, because as I said, she's capable of getting through that routine without a fall. Certainly, she's done it many, many times. And Marta wants to see no mistakes. And here's where it all started. A front flip onto a beam, onto the beam. And not many people do that because it's so hard to be mentally prepared right from the start. And this just way off balance and oof, golly. That hurts folks, <laughs> obviously. So look at it again here. She's actually pretty yeah, on and then she just here tonight so she's very very good on the uneven bars on the balance beam she's definitely gotten much more consistent and much more confident and that is exactly what Marta is looking for on this event she wouldn't necessarily put her up in the team finals but possibly the qualification round her first test right here beautiful so the way it works, you have a five-person team. And to qualify into the team finals, event finals, or all-around finals, from those five, you take four to compete on each different apparatus. But then when you move to the team finals, you've got that same five, but it's down to three up and three scores count. So you can have no mistakes. This last rotation for more than one of these women. I mean, dead legs for Simone Biles, and then these, just, I guess the women are tired. Yeah. Well, it's not, you know, they competed on Friday night, and you know, they didn't rest, folks. <laughs> they worked out twice yesterday, and they worked out this morning, and then they're here back again. It's a lot of gymnastics. Very nice dismount, great body position on the landing. Well, that's going to do it for the competition. When we come back, we'll make it official. For a fourth straight year, Simone Biles is the best gymnast in the world, and of course, the United States. <laughs> P&G Gymnastics Championships presented by Pantene are brought to you by P&G, proud sponsor of Moms, by AT&T, mobilizing your world, and by Olay, Ageless. Reconfirming something we already knew about her greatness, Simone Biles wins the 2016 P&G National Championship by 3.9 points over Ali Raisman, who edges out newcomer to the senior circuit, Lori Hernandez, for the bronze. Gabby Douglas finishes in fourth place. Across the floor we go. Here's Andrea Douglas. Uh, Andrea Joyce. <laughs> That's all right, Al. We're all a little stunned by what went on uh, here in St. Louis. So you told us, Simone, one of your missions was to enjoy the moment, to enjoy this event. Can we say mission accomplished? Um, I think we can just because I did hit all eight for eight like I wanted to, and it's another stepping stone towards the Olympic trials, so I'm very excited. An unprecedented fourth national title, but I don't really want to talk about that. I want to solve a mystery. Who are you winking at in the middle of your floor routine? Sean Johnson thought that you were winking at her tonight. Yes, I looked right at her and I winked at her, so yes, it was directed at her. All right, well then that's good to know. Congratulations, we will see you at trials. Thank you. Al? That is unbelievable. In the middle <laughs> of winning a national championship, she can pick out Sean Johnson and wink at her? Well, 
potential star here is Lori Hernandez, the 16-year-old, dazzling us with her floor exercise that is just loaded with artistry. Here she is with Andrea Joyce. A deep field here, Al, as you know, of Olympic and world champions. Lori, what does this tell you about where you are and how much closer do you think you are to your Olympic dream? Um, I think the fact that I've been working so hard day in and day out at the gym has really paid off here and it shows me that I can really keep up with these guys and help the team and God willing, Rio. Well, you belong with that group, clearly. So you got a wow this week from Marta for your floor routine. What is it like to get a wow from Marta? Um, that makes me really happy. That makes me feel like she sees my efforts and everything. And wow. <laughs> It makes you a little speechless, right? Congratulations. We will see you at trials. Thank you so much. All right, Al. And the trial's coming up in two weeks from San Jose. Okay, closing thoughts here. Uh, she's a beauty, by the way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she is such an up-and-comer. She is just joyful to watch and really really has something that you just are born with. You know, she is a performer, and it really shows. You think we see her in Rio? Got a feeling? I think so. You know, she had an amazing two days of competition. So really what she needs to do at trials is have two more solid days of competition. And in my opinion, it will be hard to leave her off that team. All right. So, Tim, let's talk about the trials. One of the key, most important storylines, as you see it, that play out over those two days in California. Well, you know, Gabby Douglas, she, she I think, will come to San Jose and she'll be a little sharper. There's no question about that. Allie Raceman, uh, if there's not a, Simone's a lock, and in my opinion, Allie Raceman, she's definitely a lock, unless she gets injured, but. Uh, Nasia, what's your summary of Gabby Douglas and what she needs to do in the next two weeks? Well, you know, to be honest, I think she did have a great showing. She was a little bit off on certain events, so I think for her, she needs to go back in the gym, train extremely hard this next week and a half before the competition to be able to gain that confidence back. Well, join us July 8th and 10th for the Women's Gymnastics Trials in San Jose from the Shark Tank, where we'll find out who will represent Team USA in Rio. Coming up next, it's your local news once again. Congratulations to Simone Biles for four straight years, the women's all-around national champion. So for Tim Dack and Nastia Luke and Andrea Joyce, I'm Al Troutwick saying so long from St. Louis. Be sure to join us when they announce that team in San Jose two weeks from tonight.